Hi, hope you guys are doing well today we'll be learning how to turn real images into NPR textures. This tutorial wouldn't have been possible without this article from medium.com. I have added my own findings at the end of this video as well, which will clear up some questions that you'll have. There are a few things in which the article is dated. I have left a link of the article in the description just in case you want to give it a read. Before we get started please subscribe to my channel, it's a small channel and it won't cost you anything, my goal is to get 1000 subscribers by the mid of this year. Thanks. The hand painted look is a compelling game art style, it adds a whimsically fantastical feel that photorealism lacks, however, actually achieving the look can be quite tedious sometimes requiring hours for a single texture. I've come up with for approximating the hand painted look that can stand on its own or if needed be the basis for a hand painted texture without having to start from a blank canvas. This process is especially helpful for those pressed for time, say during a game jam, the nice thing about this technique is that you can dial in how much or how little stylization you want, using it on a variety of textures, I haven't found a case where it completely fails to give that hand painted look. The process starts with a real photo, Somewhere in the photo you choose is a hand painted texture lurking in the details, your goal is to remove the right details to reveal the hand painted texture hidden underneath. When you're actually painting the texture, you're trying to build up the details while here, you are trying to tear them down, I tend to use Pixabay to find my photo textures, most of the images are free for commercial use and require no attribution which is always nice when developing your own game, make sure to find one evenly lit and head on when browsing through the photos. I have left a download link to the image I'll be using in the description below and will use different image examples to show my findings in the end. You'll need Krita for this method, I think from Krita version 15 Gmic plugin is pre-installed, depending on your needs, you might be able to skip the photo prep, however, in the interest of documenting the most involved case, I'll demonstrate the technique by creating a seamless slash tileable, square, power of 2 texture which tends to be the most versatile, the photo I've chosen is a bit bad so you'll want to straighten it out before you do anything. You can do this with the warp tool. Warp the photo in such a way that the horizontal mossy parts should be in a straight line. Next, crop the photo where the width and height are the same size in a power of 2. 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024, etc., to help make the texture seamless, try to crop it in such a way that the left and right and the top and bottom sort of mirror each other. In this photo's case the horizontal mossy parts should be in a straight line. To open Gmic filter, on the top menu click on filter and select start Gmic QT, find the make seamless diffusion filter, this will help remove the seams without having to use the heel slash patch or clone tool, the seams should be more or less gone now, for me the cropping and make seamless diffuse filter don't work simultaneously so I use Inkscape to create the tiled clones and Krita to make a seamless diffuse patch. However, the make seamless filter tends to introduce uneven lighting so you'll have to play around with the equalize light setting, if the equalize light setting doesn't work. You can try the normalize brightness filter after using make seamless. With the prep done, we can now move on to the stylization. With Gmic open, go to the split details wave lets filter, set the number of scales to 4 and click apply. The first split is the small details, the second is the medium details, the third is the large details, and the fourth is the residual or what's left over. You can try more or less splits but I've found 4 to be the ideal number. After splitting the details, rename the layers 1 through 4 so you can easily reference them later and it will be easier to follow along this video as well. It wouldn't be hand painted without brush strokes. After splitting the details, run layer 4 through the Brushify filter found in Gmic. Under the brush parameters, set the shape to rectangle, the number of sizes to 2, the maximal size to 45, the light type to none, the light strength to 0, and the opacity to 1. These are the ideal settings I've found but feel free to experiment, depending on how painted you want it to look, play around with the number of sizes. The goal here is to see the brush strokes so having it rough around the edges is fine, you want it to look like the colors and shading have all been roughed in but haven't been smoothed out yet. Recall that our goal is to remove just enough detail to reveal the hidden hand painted texture underneath, 
Layers 1 through 3 hold the small, medium, and large details respectively. For layers 1, 2, and 3, you'll want to smooth out the details until they each have that chunky, painterly look. With Gmic open, navigate to the smooth thin brush filter. I've found this smoothing filter to work the best for this step but feel free to try the others, the goal here is to retain the important edges or contours while blurring out the rest. Here you see me smoothing out layer 1, I take out most of the detail, retaining just a slight hint of the surface detail found on the stones and moss. Do the same for layers 2 and 3, as well. After using Brushify on layer 4 and Smooth Thin Brush on layers 1 through 3, we may get seams again, to remedy this, apply the Make Seamless filter to layers 3 and 4. You can try it on layers 2 and 1 but I've found it does more harm than good. For example, here you see Make Seamless applied to layer 2, notice the uneven lighting where it looks pinched in certain spots. To remove the seams in layers 1 and 2, use the Clone tool to lightly smooth away the obvious edges. Be careful not to introduce phantom details by cloning some detail that wasn't there before. So far we've been working on the diffuse map, the diffuse map defines the color of your game model as if it was fully lit, however, we'd like to incorporate the surface details we see in the diffuse map into the shading or lighting performed by the game engine, to do that, we'll need to create a normal map. Before creating the normal map, take a look at layers 1 through 3 and decide on how much detail you would like to incorporate, typically, layer 3 is enough but sometimes I add in layer 2, as well. After you have decided how much detail to include, Copy the layers and merge them together by selecting them both and right clicking and selecting merge layer above slash below, move this layer up above 1 and set its blend mode to normal, now take this layer and desaturate it using the average setting, click filter on the top menu, select adjust and then select desaturate, use the average setting. At this point, you'll want to look up how to create a normal map using your preferred program, for Krita. It has a built in filter called height to normal map, select filter, edge detection height to normal map and choose from either Pruitt, Sobel, or Simple. I tend to use Sobel or Simple the most. If the details are extra light then I'll choose Pruitt. After clicking OK, rename this layer normal and hide every layer. I will be skipping the cavity map part in this tutorial as I don't see it being used that often, if you want to learn how to make a cavity map you can read the article as I have provided its link in the description below. The last map we'll create is the ambient occlusion map. This map allows us to shadow the larger recessed regions in our texture that receive less light, your game engine can also use it when it applies the ambient lighting. The cavity map and ambient occlusion map tend to overlap but in general the ambient occlusion map shadows the larger occluded areas while the cavity map handles the smaller occluded areas, the cavity map also highlights the sharply raised areas. Similar to the normal map, select, copy, and merge the details layers you would like to include in the ambient occlusion map, once merge, Desaturate this new layer using the min option this time. With Gmic open, navigate to the basic adjustments filter, play with the brightness and contrast until you have the desired result, you'll want the raised areas to be white and the recessed areas to be a soft gray, when you have the look you want, press apply and set this layer's blend mode to multiply. The stylization process is now complete but before you export you may want to perform some color correction on layer 4, I enjoy using the Gmic basic adjustments filter for this step. Now I'll show you my findings with respect to this method, basically for something as random as dirt and grass where there is no pattern at all. Please keep an eye on the preview tab, instead of using the make seamless diffuse option you'll get better results with make seamless patch based option in Gmic QT. As you can see it's better blended in comparison to make seamless diffuse. The second finding is that for something like desert sand pattern or water waves, both the make seamless diffuse and make seamless patch based options fail. You can obviously still get the hand painted texture look it just won't be repeatable slash tileable, the reason for this is that even though they're patterns they're not regular patterns, if a sand wave is ending on the top, one wave should start at the bottom. The third and final finding is that if you want to apply this method on a transparent background image, say for wines or leaves or grass it will remove their transparency as soon as you apply the split details wavelets step, rather than editing the background out you should complete the entire method without bothering with the added background. 
Once you're done take the diffuse image and clip it with Inkscape rather than editing the background out. Here you can see the result comparison. If you found this video helpful please leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel, and watch another one of my videos because that's how the YouTube algorithm works, it's a small channel and it won't cost you anything, thanks and I'll see you in the next video.